What's up and welcome to episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. So this was a video that I filmed a couple weeks back and I really, really wanted to release it. It's still a really interesting laptop. It's the Oris X9. This is about a $4,000 laptop that basically has been discontinued now because not enough people were buying it. So I decided to release the review anyway. So here it is. <laughs> What's up and welcome to the episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're going to talk about this ridiculous $4,000 amazing, amazing laptop. But the question is, is it worth it? This thing has a 6 core i9 8950HK. For the GPU it has a GTX 1080 that is overclocked, has 32 gigs of RAM which is an upgrade compared to most laptops that come with 16 gigs. It has a 17 inch full HD 144 hertz with a 100% sRGB rating and it's an IPS quality level display with above average contrast. It also comes with one terabyte worth of SSD and a one terabyte hard drive space so you've got two terabytes of storage in this which is much better than the average competition coming in at 256 gig or 512 gig SSDs on average. Now this thing is $3,900 and that is a lot of money especially when you compare it to some of the competitors out there but the main reason why it costs so much is it has so many upgrades over the base spec models. When you compare this with like an Alienware, the Alienware doesn't have a high refresh rate screen by default, only has 16 gigs of RAM and only a 256 gig SSD. So when you factor in all these upgrades, you're only paying a little bit extra for the Aorus X9. Now the thing that makes the Aorus X9 incredibly special is how thin and light it is. I mean, look at this thing. It is very, very narrow, less than an inch thick at the front and about 1.1 inches thick in the back. That is an exceptionally thin and light chassis considering the processing power. And at the end, I'm gonna let you know whether I think it's worth buying or passing on it for a different laptop and I'll give you a couple of potential alternatives to consider as well. So let's go ahead and hop right into this quick review. Now this Aorus X9 has been upgraded with liquid metal cooling and thermal pads already. So this model will run just a tad cooler than a standard Aorus X9. Traditionally, most laptop CPUs are gonna be very power limited. Now the more power throughput you can put through a processor, the higher core clocks it's able to maintain on a consistent basis, right? It's like revving an engine in a car, the more gas you put down, the faster the car engine will go, the more power that it will put out. Take for example, this super thin and light Razer Blade 15 I've got right here. This thing has a max boost. It boosts up to 80 watts for about 10 seconds and then goes down to 45 watts. And from there, it throttles permanently. Uh, and basically, the clock speeds are about three gigahertz across all six cores. The Aorus X9 with the i9 processor, on the other hand, is special because it can continuously burst past its power rating to 105 watts of continuous throughput. Now, when you get this laptop out of the box, it'll come overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz and undervolted by 75 millivolt. Now, when you undervolt it, it basically makes the processor run more efficiently, utilizing the power that it has in a better way. In Cinebench R15, out of the box, it hit 1365. It went down to about 1270, 1250 or so on a consistent basis. I was able to overcome this and increase the boost by undervolting even further, increasing the power boost as a whole, and then increasing the clock speeds. I was able to get 1525 in Cinebench R15 with a multi-score, and I was able to score around 1520 in a continuous loop. But in order to do that, I had to undervolt the processor by 180 millivolts. And when the processor was idling in Windows, it caused crashes. Now there might be ways to troubleshoot this, to fix this, be able to get it to run at 4.7 gigahertz consistently. Instead, I think the far better solution, honestly, is to come back a little bit from that brink and run it at 4.5 gigahertz consistently. Now at 4.5 gigahertz, I was hitting right around the 1440 to 1450 in Cinebench R15, and I think that is just fantastic. That is close to the best possible performance that you can get in any laptop right now. As a comparison point, we have the Razer Blade 15 here again, and notice it is 
It is tiny. It is like an ultra book compared to this massive monster. But this Razor Blade 15 out of the box was hitting about 940 in Cinebench R15 Multi in a loop, and that's what it throttles down to. It initially hits a little higher than that, but it'll almost instantly throttle down to about 940. So we're talking about a 50% performance gain when you compare the Aorus versus the Razor Blade 15. And the, the great thing about the Aorus is that it still weighs 8.1 pounds, and that is incredibly thin and light when you compare it to other 17-inch gaming laptops that are usually pushing close to two inches thick, and on top of that, they usually weigh more than 10 pounds. Now, the GTX 1080 is also overclockable, and you can just overclock it straight with the software in here, and it'll boost from between 1850 to 1925 megahertz. That is hitting the high end of the potential clock speeds, and that's fantastic. You will be able to hit the 144 hertz refresh rate of this display in like 95% of games, even on maximum possible ultra settings. If you're a competitive first person shooter player, this is a fantastic option. Now the only downside here is that this is only a 1080p display. I would have loved to see a 1440p display. So this guy is $3,900 plus any tax and shipping that you have to pay. Now when you compare that to a lot of popular models such as the Alienware, which comes in in at $2,700, that is a $1,200 price difference. And I think that is really misleading because Dell does a good job of marking down the price by reducing the baseline specs. The bottom line is I think Aorus really messed up with their pricing on this thing. I think it could have been priced closer to $3,300 if some of those baseline internal specs had been downgraded and then were given as optional upgrades, like maybe selling two models of this, one at a lower spec, one at a higher spec. And I think that's gonna push a lot of people away from the Aorus X9 and instead into purchasing the Aorus X7 or just an entirely different laptop to begin with. Now besides the price, which is an obvious weakness for this amazing laptop, the other thing is its overall build size. Like it, it has very large bezels around it. See how high this is, see how tall this is. When you put it down flat, You've got this back bezel, so it may, really makes the laptop a lot bigger overall, and that means this thing won't fit in my laptop bag here. It's sticking out of the bag because it's so wide, so you'll definitely have to get an extra big bag if you want to haul this thing around. Now there's a full mechanical keyboard on this bad boy. Let's take a listen. You can hear that? It sounds and feels fantastic. I, this is one of my favorite laptop keyboards that I've ever used. If you're used to a traditional full-size desktop keyboard, this just feels extremely natural and realistic. It, it's fantastic. Now the trackpad is very good. It tracks your fingers, has excellent gesture control, really good drivers, but the problem is its overall size is rather small considering how big this laptop is. I mean, look at it's tiny by comparison, and uh, you've got laptops like the Razer Blade right here with very large trackpads. This super minimal laptop has a bigger trackpad than the Aorus X9. I think Aorus really needs to focus on increasing the trackpad size in future laptops. Two excellent alternatives to the Aorus X9, you have the MSI GT75. Now both of these have slightly downgraded processors, but you can get the GT75 with the i9 as well. I have actually tested the Aorus X7 and I was able to maintain a 4.3 gigahertz across all cores, which was just fantastic. Both of these come with the GTX 1080, have 16 gigs of RAM, which is less than the Aorus X9, but of course you can upgrade that. Now both of these laptops have excellent screens that are high refresh rate, though the GT75 will be slightly more colorful. And as far as storage goes, it's a little bit of a downgrade at 512 gig SSD instead of a one terabyte SSD. Now the GT75 is an example of a laptop that gets thicker, has really good cooling, and it weighs a lot, so there's a big downside here. Well, the Aorus X7 is an example of a laptop that gets even thinner at 0.9 inches thin and only weighs 7.4 pounds. Between these laptops, if you're looking for something super thin and light, I think the Aorus X7 is the way to go. I'll be having a full review of the Aorus X7 soon. I must say I'm overall really impressed with the Aorus X9's performance for how thin and light it is. At 8.1 pounds, I don't think you can find another laptop that is as thin as this and as light as it is at the same time, but it has a really steep price point which makes it really hard to justify because you can almost get to this level of performance for like $2,000 less. I think for the vast majority of people out there, 
it's just not going to be worth it. So there you go. That's the RSX9. Not really worth buying unless you're in that specific niche that would love having the super powerful ultra thin and you're willing to pay that premium premium price for it. That's it for this episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll have a massive giveaway that I'll be doing shortly. So link in the top comment down below. If not, I'll update that top comment to whatever giveaway I'm currently doing. Love to hear what you guys think about. Post your comments and opinions down below. We'll see you next time. Brandon, out.